During the American Civil War, the United States of America was split neatly down the middle, into North and South, into Blue and Grey, Rebels and Federals. But was this always the case? Were there not people on different sides of the line that actually agreed more with the other side than the side they were on? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about just one of these cases. And it's in a rather surprising place in New York City, because New York City was very much bound up with the southern economy, particular with the cotton trade, which of course was harvested by slaves on southern plantations, a key issue in the Civil War. And this amounted to about 50% of the economic income of New York City was connected with this trade with the South. This also, of course, created political ties with areas in the South due to the large economic economic interest that New York City had in continuing these relations. So in 1860, when Abraham Lincoln won the presidential election, the, those in New York weren't particularly happy about this. There was also a political background for this, as Abraham Lincoln was a Republican, whereas most in New York at the time were instead founders of the Democrat Party, including the mayor of New York City at the time, Fernando Wood. Now, Fernando Wood had his own very particular idea about how he was going to keep those trading relations with the South, who of course they would soon be at war with, how he would keep them open. And that is in 1861, he suggested to New York City board that instead of joining the Union or remaining with the Union and fighting against the Confederates in the South, New York City would become an independent state, an independent city-state, apart from both the Union and the Confederates, and that they would remain at peace with both. This new entity would be called the Free City of Tri Insula, and this Tri Insula is Latin for three islands, as it would comprise of Manhattan, of Long Island, and of Staten Island. Quite rightly, everyone else thought that this was a crazy proposal, and particularly after Southern troops bombarded Fort Sumter in early 1861, this became an incredibly unpopular opinion, even for the most hardcore Democrats. These Democrats, sometimes called Peace Democrats or Copperheads, were those Democrats that favoured a peaceful solution with the South, as opposed to the War Democrats who, despite their political differences, were aiding the Republican President Abraham Lincoln in the war against the South. But in any case, for pretty much every faction, this idea of creating an independent New York City was a step far too far, and it never occurred. And that would be the end of the story. But this is where the real story begins, and this is where the interesting story takes a very interesting turn. And that is because one neighborhood in New York called Town Line actually did what the rest of the city did not. In 1861, 125 men from this neighborhood got together and held a referendum. A referendum on whether they would join the Confederate States of America and leave the Union. And the side that voted to leave actually got the most votes. 85 of the men voted to join the Confederate States of America against 40 who wanted to stay within the Union. So for all intents and purposes, Town Line was now a part of the Confederate States of America, right? Well, how did the Union respond to this? Of course, they can't have somewhere in the North declaring their allegiance to the Confederacy in such a vital location as New York City of all places. Did they A, bombard it like the Southerners did with Fort Sumter, pummel it into obliteration? Did they do a bit of gunboat diplomacy, send in the fleet, you know, scare them with the big ironclads and then surely they'll join the Stars and Stripes again very soon? Or did they just send the troops in, gun them down in the streets, house to house, well, how did they approach it? Well, they did none of these things. And the reason is that neither the United States, the Union, or the Confederate States actually ever acknowledged that Townline had held this vote to join the Confederate States. Because Townline wasn't a recognized municipal entity, it didn't have any sort of legal jurisdiction of its own to declare allegiance or break away from the United States. Furthermore, there were no actually delineated boundaries, so no one really knew if one street was part of the Confederacy or part of the Union. And so both sides really just ignored it. However, it is true that after the vote was held, at least five men left town line for Canada and then made their way to the south to join the Army of Northern Virginia, commanded by General Lee, and so to join the Confederate Army. 
However, it should be noted that over 20 men also fought on the side of the Union, so it wasn't like this was a sort of small bastion of recruitment for the Southern Army in the North, because it certainly wasn't. Now, had that been the end of the story uh, with the war's end in 1865, then this probably would simply have remained one of those sort of wacky wartime stories that may or may not have actually ever been remembered. But it's the fact that in 1865, there was no sort of reversal of the town's decision to join the Confederate States of America or even a, a sort of symbolic reintegration into the Union that makes this story so interesting. And this would continue for over 80 years. And there were signs in the town that they had done this. For example, the fire department used to wear Confederate insignia on their uniforms, and members of the town would frequently refer to themselves as the last of the rebels, a slogan that apparently appeared in quite a few places. Furthermore, they would also often fly a Confederate flag in the township itself. Now, this went on until the end of the Second World War. I should note also that the members of the town continued, continued to pay taxes throughout the Civil War and in the period afterwards to the federal government. And men from the township served in both the First and Second World War for the Americans, of course. Now, this went on until after the Second World War, when the president, Harry Truman himself, actually had heard about various of these uh, enclaves that had asked to rejoin the Union, and so he sent a letter to the members of Town Line asking them to consider rejoining the United States of America. And so it was that in 1946, on the 23rd of January, some 81 years after they had voted to leave, actually, that, that math isn't right, almost 80 years after they had voted to leave the United States of America, they held another referendum. And this time they asked, should they rejoin the United States of America? And this time the vote was fairly one-sided. They voted 90 in favor of rejoining. However, what I find interesting is that there were still 23 people that thought that they should remain in this sort of legal limbo, limbo zone as still of the last part of the Confederate States of America. But of course, 90 voted in favor. And so the Confederate States of America can officially be scrubbed off the map after all those years. And actually in recent years, they, the fire department decided to remove the Confederate insignia because of the modern political situation. Although we still know what it looked like because we have it here on this badge with that same slogan once again. From what I hear, this sort of vaguely Confederate memory of the town is something that is still kept to if you visit today. And there were, uh, I've seen pictures of people dressed as Confederate soldiers and that they have various flags of both Union and Confederate units inside the town in a kind of exhibition. I haven't been there myself, but um, yeah, it seems like a very interesting story that I wanted to cover in a video. But what do you guys think? Do you think, I think this is a, quite a funny story. Of course, there is perhaps a darker element to this. Is there another reason why they wanted to remain in the Confederacy for so long? There are certain rumors about that as well, but I couldn't find any real sort of substantiated evidence, which is why I didn't put it in this video. Let me know in the comments below. Did you know about Town Line and their little vote to join the Confederate States of America, which was only overturned in 1946? If you did, let me know, how did you find out about it? And are there other examples of various places like this? I heard of a couple that may have been around uh, as well. So I thought that was a very interesting thing to make a video about. I've got a few more videos coming on the American Civil War, in particular some about foreign involvement in the American Civil War, uh, starting with an episode on the Irish, who were incredibly involved in the American Civil War, fighting for both sides and in really huge numbers, as well as a few other nations and uh, people from various places joining up. Anyway, for now, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I have been Hilbert and this has been The History.